What a finish in Vegas. Try your luck. The house doesn't always win. The Miami Dolphins pulling off the win in dramatic fashion. A 44-yard field goal with time winding down 26 to 25, your final field goal for those keeping track at home also pushed this one over the number plenty changed in the final 15 with 22 points scored in the final quarter two pillars of the pick six pod here ryan wilson john breach here to break down the day that was including that wild matchup between the dolphins and the raiders not sure what to make sense of those last few moments of that ball game it was here you win it here you win it here you win it in the end it is the dolphins the playoff hopes stay alive but that's the question i want to ask you too ryan i'll go to you first here did either of those teams look like playoff football teams to you uh, yeah, when Ryan Fitzpatrick came on the field, <laughs> the Dolphins suddenly look at playoff team. I've been saying this since week seven, back when Brian Flores sent uh, Fitzpatrick to the bench. They were three and three at the time. Fitzpatrick was completing 70% of his passes. This may sound familiar because I've been saying it every single week. And here we are again, late in the fourth quarter. Tua's unable to move the ball. He's throwing. He looks like Ben Roethlisberger throwing two-yard passes. I understand they had no one to throw the ball to. Devontae Parker was hurt. Jakeem Grant went out. Guess what? Ryan Fitzpatrick comes in there and lights it up. So I think this team is exactly where they need to be right now. And maybe Brian Flores, who has said from Jump Street that Tua is our guy, maybe he's going to have to backtrack on that and admit going into Week 17, Joe, that Tua is not their guy for at least one more week. Ryan, I don't think Brian Flores is going to admit anything. He's been doing this all season long. We saw it against the Broncos. Tua struggled. He got benched. They brought out Fitzpatrick. He almost let a miraculous comeback. He did lead that comeback. And you said you've been talking about this since week seven, how you can't keep Fitzpatrick on the bench. You need to play him. I think I've been saying this for 10 years. If <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick is on a roll, you ride that Fitzpatrick train until it crashes. I think we've all seen this. Usually it's at the beginning of the season, weeks one through six. He plays the amazing games. He hits that midseason law and falls apart. Well, guess what? Brian Flores outsmarted all of us because he avoided that midseason law by putting Ryan Fitzpatrick on the bench. I mean, what he did in the fourth quarter, throwing for nearly 200 yards when Tua had less than 100 in the entire game. Uh, Fitzpatrick's performance was nothing short of miraculous. And you know what? With this defense, and as long as Fitzpatrick is the starting quarterback, the Dolphins are a team I would be afraid of in the postseason. Uh, we shall see how it all pans out as Dolphins do hope to make it to postseason action here. But you guys touched on it there. The decision at quarterback, whether it was the willingness to call plays or the belief in Ryan Fitzpatrick to push the ball downfield, completely changed the complexion of this one. But moving forward, talking about the confidence of Tua Tagovailoa, uh, Ryan, how do the Dolphins move forward? Is, is there a frank conversation that needs to be had over the next couple of days to say, we're going to get back to you next year? I think that's the conversation you have for Brian Flores. But I will say this, uh, Tua Tagovailoa was extremely happy by all appearances for how this game played out. Play by play, he was cheering on Ryan Fitzpatrick and his teammates, and that's what you want to see. And I don't think this is so much uh, Tagovailoa being uh, falling short of where expectations as a rookie. I think it's more Brian Flores putting him out there when he's not yet ready. We've talked about this. He had the serious hip injury in November 2019. He made the miraculous comeback. Just because Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert are having amazing seasons, at least until Joe Burrow was hurt, that doesn't mean you have to push two out there when, as Breach and I have been pointing out, Fitzpatrick's playing out of his mind. We know there's going to be down spots with Fitzpatrick. We haven't seen it this year because he hasn't played very much. But I think, Joe, what you do is in Week 17 against the Bills in a game you have to win if you're Miami, you say, Tua, uh, get that clipboard, take some notes, and uh, we'll see you in 2021. Yeah, I think Brian Flores said all that needs to be said without actually saying it tonight. With the Dolphins season on the line in the fourth quarter, who did he turn to? He didn't turn to Tua. He turned to Ryan Fitzpatrick. And that makes me think that he is the guy that the Dolphins are going to turn to going forward for Week 17 and the playoffs. And, Joe, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think if you're Brian Flores, you sit Tua down tomorrow and you say, look, you're our quarterback of the future. You're absolutely the guy. Uh, that we want to be here for the long haul. But right now, our best chance to win is with Ryan Fitzpatrick, our best chance to win next week, our best chance to win in the postseason. After that, you'll have an entire offseason to learn this offense. Uh, you, you know, Assuming there's no pandemic, you get training camp, you get uh, everything. So I think that's what you say to Tua, and you, you roll with Ryan Fitzpatrick. It is a results-based business, and the results spoke for themselves on Saturday night.